Now in other trending stories, Mayor Emanuel makes a plea for peace and should taxpayers foot the bill for the Obama Presidential Library. After a violent Easter weekend where five children were among dozens of people shot, Mayor Emanuel puts a new emphasis on values. Any child where that laughter has been replaced by the familiarity of gun violence has had their childhood taken from them. Having small children, it is very troubling to know that you know, as they grow up, these are some of the challenges they're going to face. Governor Quinn is sitting on the mayor's pension reform plan, and downtown alderman Brendan Riley says no go to higher property taxes. Our taxes are high enough, absolutely. I'm a taxpayer. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see um, any more tax increase that's, you know, coming out of my, my household. House Speaker Mike Madigan wants to spend $100 million of your money on the Obama Presidential Library even though Illinois is drowning in red ink. I think that's terrible. How, a hundred million dollars and we haven't solved the pension. I see what they're doing, but I don't really see the greater value. And a really big idea to boost tourism, giant puppets from France may be walking down Chicago streets. Whoa, that might be kind of cool. If the deal pans out, the puppets will arrive during the summer of 2016. That, that's fine with me. I think that would be a lot of fun. More on the puppets later. Joining me today are TV and radio personality Art Sims, Babette Holder Youngberg, co-founder of TheLastCivilRight.org, and Angela Caputo, journalist at the Chicago Reporter. Welcome, everyone. So we had another spike in shootings, a warm Easter weekend. Some people talked about the weather. Mayor Emanuel was very emphatic. No, this is about whether we have values. Art, is this the right conversation to begin for the mayor? He's absolutely right. This has been going on in most communities for over 30 years now. Um, values have gone down tremendously. People don't care anymore. It is what it is. Uh, we are wild, and we need to hone in our behavior and how we look at things. Our children are so precious to us, but yet we're losing them at alarming rates. And it's so sad that it's the same areas that this stuff is going on continuously all the time. Yeah, but some of these um, neighborhoods where these shootings have taken place, um, the people said they felt insulted by this because they said the inference was that uh, Mayor Emanuel and his neighborhood uh, had values where they did not. Well, I can see how some could perceive it to have been that way, but I don't believe the mayor was trying to um, put it out there like that. But nowadays, a lot of people don't want to hear that your children possibly aren't being taught values or the values they are being taught in the home. They're not bringing that out in public with them and out in the streets. These days lately, I have, I, I, it's, it's almost a new term going around called fraticide mm -hmm. you know you know you've heard of that you know by instead of fraternizing and, and resolving disputes a different way now we have fraticide because a lot of times someone who is shot or and you know injured usually they know them from what I'm hearing in a lot of these cases Angela is this a question I, of values I'm gonna disagree I think that you know I think it's um, Mayor Emanuel's living in a bubble on this. I mean, there are so many good parents out there who are doing the right thing. Um, they don't condone their kids' behavior, but they're, they're worn thin. They're working around the clock. You know, one woman comes to mind who lives right around the corner from the studio. She wakes up at 4.30 in the morning, goes to her first job. She's working late through the night. Two of her sons have been, you know, had run-ins with the law, and she's like, throw the book at them. She's like, she's disgusted by their behavior, but she's doing everything right as a mom, you know? And so I think that the question of values is um, what opportunity, how are we investing in communities and people in Chicago so that they can be around to be there for their kids and with their kids? I, I just disagree that it's a, it's a matter of people don't have values. I think that it's structural inequality. I think that it's poverty. And, and that's what's breeding this. It's, it's not that people don't care about how their kids are behaving. 
Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I agree with you on what you're saying, but I just think that our entire value system has gone out the window. I don't know if it's the music we listen to. I don't know if it's the environment that we're in, but we just don't have it anymore. We fall out with each other. We don't like each other. We Hatred has become the way of living in this day and age, and I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. I think that we do need to go back to respect and being dignified and talking to each other in a manner in which it is uplifting and not always so negative. I think every time you turn on the news, you see some story. There are more African Americans on news than there are African American on regular TV shows, and it's all negative things. And well, I just think one of the values that Mayor Emanuel is talking about is the culture of no snitch in some of these neighborhoods, of not telling the police. But people in the neighborhoods point out that there are real serious consequences for cooperating with the police oh, yeah. because it's a matter of life and death. Well, I think also, you know, the way that our criminal justice system operates, people just don't have a lot of faith in it. You know, you have people um, who are serving really long sentences for petty crimes. Um, you have people who plead out. I mean, most of our cases in the Cook County Criminal Courts and in a plea deal where people don't feel like they get a fair shake, you know, or go to trial. So I think that, that that's a big part of it is just this whole distrust in the criminal justice system as well. Not only that, there's distrust with the police and the law enforcement. And there's for good reason in some instances. And also the no snitch, sometimes you will be snitching out your own relative. So I, I you know, I'm not saying that that's a good but policy, but that's when will the vicious cycle ever stop? When will it ever stop? Somebody has got to stand up, say something, and make it be known. If not, it will continue. In, the, in my opening statement, I said it's been 30 years of foolishness in most of these communities, and we know who these people are. They're just getting older every day. They're not getting better. They're getting older. More and, police and, and the federal task force are on the way. Is that going to make any difference? I don't, well. <clears throat> you can have a 1,000 cops on the streets, but if you don't stop it at the core, It'll never change. It'll never change. Absolutely. You can have a million cops on the street. What difference will it make? Yeah, Most know. of these cops know who these people are. We all grew up together. I mean, you know, if this has been going on for this amount of time, you obviously know who this nut is over here. You, you've got to control that situation. Well, well, the mayor has a lot on his plate, including his pension reform uh, bill for uh, uh, municipal workers. It's languishing in Springfield. The governor hasn't uh, signed it yet. And now Bruce Rounder, the Republican candidate for governor, is sending out robocalls urging uh, a veto. Uh, Angela, is this pension reform in big trouble? Well, you know, I, I think it remains to be seen. We've kicked the can down the road on pension reform so many times. And I think that really, um, if, there, if this is going to pass, what we need is more transparency. We need to really dig into, you know, what are their options um, and to cobble together a solution. Brendan Riley, the alderman from downtown, he's talking about pulling money out of tax increment financing districts. And nobody knows more about that than Alderman Riley because he's sitting on, you know, the pot of gold. We have $1.7 billion sitting in that TIF fund. The city said that that money is all obligated, but they've never disclosed. You know, we don't have a full accounting of where that money is obligated. So I think that we really need to um, make an informed decision, but until there's more transparency, you know, we can't make an informed decision about what our options are. And that Alderman uh, Riley has said he will not vote for an increase in Chicago property taxes. Uh, Art, is that going to be a real sticking point, the idea that the mayor's plan depends on property tax revenue Which to solve this problem? Which is very true, but people cannot afford property tax increase. They cannot. Uh, already we're being parking meters and fees and fines, and if property tax goes up, people are not going to be able to stay in their homes. It's, it's going to be a problem. And I agree with you. We need to see more of where other money and funds are being allocated because people need their pensions. I said this the last time I was on the show. Don't deprive people who have worked all these years of not being able to get their pension, but we cannot afford to take on any more debt. But, but, but where do we get the money? That's the question. And, and then that's what I was going to say. If, if they don't do the property taxes, which, you know, I can understand that we're, we're already having people are looking at what they owe on their homes and what the value is. But at the same time, it, I know it has to be something that they're moody and, and, and poor. They're going to look at and say, this is a stable um, source of revenue to fund these pensions because otherwise 
Chicago can't afford another credit downgrade can't. either. And yes, those people are owed their pensions. They mm -hmm. were promised to them. And, and also, you got to look at the root cause of all this trouble that we have. And we're, we got to talk real reform. For and, way and in while, the future. while Illinois can't Can fund its pensions, uh, Speaker Madigan and Mayor Emanuel want to spend $100 million of taxpayer money to fund or help fund the Obama Presidential Library. Angela? Well, you know, I mean, again, I think it comes down to transparency. What are we going to get out of this? I mean, we've given $100 million, I believe, to Motorola uh, to keep 3,000 jobs in the state, and, you know, and then it split up, and the Chinese bought it, and, you know, who knows who works there. I think that, again, you know, we just need to get back to, we need to look at, Investments are not, public investments are not necessarily a bad thing, but we also have to look at how we can invest in growing our economy so that we're not so stretched. Right. I, at The Reporter, I'm uh, preparing to publish a story about vacant properties in Chicago. We've got more than 18,000 vacant single-family mm -hmm. homes and apartment buildings. Like That's tax revenue that we're not bringing in because we have all of this unproductive property. As a city, we've spent $36 million knocking down and boarding up vacant homes in just the past three years. I mean, so we need to really think about different ways to grow our economy. You're talking about the federal response to crime in Chicago. We need a federal rebuilding, you know, and, and then what, we're What specifically about spending this tax mayor on a library that may draw thousands and thousands of tourists? Don't get me wrong. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it would, you know, pay homage to our president. I think it would be great for our city. But I'm looking at the fact that I drove here today, and the potholes in this city are just ridiculous. Uh, everywhere you go, spend that hundred million on getting our infrastructure better. Let, let's let's build some things and make our city be a world class city. That using a hundred million dollars of taxpayers' money to do it, I just think is absolutely ridiculous. And then we don't know if we'll get it or not. It could be New York, it could be Hawaii, but you know, this is the sweet the deal, Beth. I'm just going to say two things. I'm going to say roads and bridges. How many years have we heard about that? And look at Chicago. And personally, I don't agree with the library for Obama, President Obama coming here. If that was the case, if we were going to have a monument to a president, in my personal opinion, it would have been Ronald Reagan. He was born and raised well, in Illinois. Well, we're not talking about bringing the Reagan Library. That's, but, already, that's, that's already, already done. California. But I know. You're but talking about building exactly. an Obama. And, and some of the costs, the estimates could, you know, $100 million, that's... But then to my understanding, presidential libraries, there are fundraisers for them anyway. So why are we putting up money up front? Well, Speaker maybe Madigan says the precedent it, here is that the Lincoln Library and Museum in Springfield uh, was supported by Illinois taxpayers. There, there was a... Yeah, there was one that was. But you're you're right. Most presidential libraries have been privately uh, supported. By sure, I, I'm sure there are millions of people who would donate a dollar a piece to make sure this library is built in Chicago. If that's the case, not you know put it on taxpayers. We we are just talking about property tax. We're talking about you know less pensions, and now we're trying to put a, a hundred million up for a library. Good luck. While that's we're great. talking about attracting tourists, here's a really gigantic idea. And that's 50-foot puppets walking down uh, Michigan Avenue. There's a deal in the works uh, to bring these puppets here from a French <laughs> theater company in 2016. What do you think? I'm all for it. I'm all for anything that makes Chicago exciting, happy, wonderful. As long as it's not snow and ice and we have 50-feet puppets, as long as I don't drink too much, they'll be okay. Very quickly. I, I hear the revenue that you, they generate when tourism is great. So. Angela, last word to you. Yeah, I mean, hey, Chicago's already got the wow factor, but <laughs> let's amp it up. And we didn't get the Olympics for 2016. So right. maybe this is our consolation prize, big marionettes walking down the streets. And we could have the Democratic Convention in 2016. Wouldn't uh, we be well. the first U.S. city, too, if we got they those were puppets big, here? They were a big hit in Liverpool, so we'll have uh, to yeah. see. Art Sims, Babette Holder-Youngberg, and Angela Caputo, thanks for your time today.